allow me to read to you in Spanish. No. <laughs> a portion of uh, my father's book that he wrote uh, right before he passed away. It's, it is a, a book that's pretty much titled My Ministries and Stories About His Life of Ministry. And, uh, and having a conversation when someone, he wrote down some details about his ministry within the, in the city where it was seen that it was impossible for him to do ministry. Uh, he wrote and answered the, some of the people that were questioning him in light to what he was trying to do. He wrote simply to answer those who were guessing his ministry and the power uh, and the position of doing ministry in this part of the city. We are serving a God who calls us. For he wrote, Nosotros servimos a un Dios que nos llamó in Spanish. We are serving a God who calls us, and he is the God of the impossible. He is the God of the impossible. That story relates to my father was a, 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 a church developer. He was a wonderful preacher. I wish I had a part of his gift. But he was a wonderful preacher. And, uh, and throughout his ministry in the Dominican Republic, he was blessed to develop four congregations, which today is our big church. But the one that he em emphasized in this particular chapter was uh, uh, one of those churches that he, through the vision of his ministry, God placed him in the colonial section of the city of Santo Domingo. The colonial section in, in the downtown of Santo Domingo was owned by the Roman Catholic Church. And that's pretty much for 500 years. The, the oldest cathedral uh, church is in there. And uh, the, the, his only, uh, uh, my father told the council, the, the Assembly of God Council, uh, the Lord has given me a vision to develop a congregation in the colonial uh, section of town. People thought he was crazy. It is impossible. You will get so many reactions, and you know, the, the political, the, the, the Roman Catholics and the church and the people there, that is a, 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 a one community that you cannot evangelize. My father placed himself, said, well, the Lord has given me a vision. And he's going to open the door. They call him crazy. They call him a hero Bitcoin. And uh, anyway, today there's a church there. A church that is blooming. A church that has been, uh, that, that, uh, that had to purchase the next door houses because they are growing so big. So the vision of my father saw, it, it, was, it was a vision of possibilities. Because he simply was trusting in God and his word. God and his word. I went to see my eye doctor a uh, few last year. And you know, when you are in the, in the doctor's, in the eye doctor's office, it, you have to be honest with yourself, right? You, you, if your vision has been challenged, you need to be, tell the truth. When they ask you, are you able to see this? You have to say, yeah, I will see, yes or no. Anyway, the doctor asked me, uh, 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 asked me to, to cover with this uh, instrument my, my, my right eye, and he indicated to me, can you see, what, what can you see? And I was telling him what I was able to see, and at one point, I thought, I cannot see that clear. So I started guessing. <laughs> and I, I, as I, you know, and he noticed that, okay, switch to the right eye. So I was uh, able to see very with my right eye. So it means that something is, is playing game with me. My left eye doesn't really see better than uh, details of growing old. I went home and I said to him, I said, you know, but at one point when the doctor was asking me about my left eye, I kind of lied a little bit. <laughs> I was not really telling the truth to myself 
oh, the doctor knew that was, I was just really not telling. But, you know, uh, uh, you cannot really fake not able to see. Right? If you fake that, you're not, you know, you will be in trouble. So you must relate to see a vision that you have that you are able to see completely. And what you see need to transform you or change you. Ezekiel, the prophet, was called to have certain visions of the presence of God in the places that perhaps you and I will not see much, but simply dry bones, dead people, dynamics that will come, that are there, that are uh, completely out of control, things that we cannot change, and realities that are there simply to give us a sense of misunderstanding in a way. The Israelites, after being captured by Egypt, they, they, God was uh, uh, freed them and sent them to the promised land and provide for them ways to, or leading them to be in a place where, of the, the, you know, the tales of the presence of God. And uh, still they came and they were revealing against God. So in a particular point where Ezekiel was prophesying this 25-year-old uh, prophet is, is in the middle of uh, another conquering be of the, uh, upon the Israelites. Now the Babylonians have taken over and they uh, trashed the temple. They are uh, completely gone. So the people, the Israelites are in, in the sense of despair. And God took Ezekiel and placed him in, in this field, filled with dry bones. In this particular cemetery. And he asking Ezekiel, telling him, okay, hey, prophesy to these bones. I can imagine an expression of Jericho or Ezekiel responding to, to God. Well, this is, this is impossible, oh Lord. What are you asking me to do? To prophesy to this? They are dead. They are pretty much gone. They are simply dry bones in here. Not only you are called to prophesy, but God uh, 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 directing to pray over the dry bones. <laughs> to prophesy, to give the message, and to pray. And to pray. And to prophesy. And to pray. Details are when we, we, we the, 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 the secure seen the impossibilities. impossibilities. Personally, I will be afraid simply by seeing dry bones and, and being right in the center of this desolation, this devastation, this completely thing that I cannot completely understand. Those dynamics are frightened. Those dynamics of, of that condition perhaps, perhaps can be a, a detrimental to my, to my own faith. I will be asking God, why are you placing me here? And will you know this is impossible, a, an impossible task to do? You ask me to proclaim the goodness of your presence in the midst of these activities of the dry bones where only despair is present. And where we are saying to ourselves, oh, no, we, 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 are, we are dead. We are simply cannot do much. And God asked Ezekiel a question. Do you think that those bonds can become alive again? God is really testing him. What do you see, Ezekiel? Do you feel or think that those bones can be alive or become alive again? And Ezekiel, being as, as smart as he was, uh, Oh, God, you know. You know. It's like when we face our own realities, our own dynamics of despair, our own dynamics of health, or, or dynamics of, 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 of anything within our family, within our churches, within our dynamics of life, we say, no, Lord, you know everything. What exactly are we placing ourselves to believe? 
that he knows everything. We have limitations. We know that. We cannot see that well. Even when we are thinking we are seeing well. We are placing the vision completely in ourselves and around us. What do we see? What you are able to see is seek you. Oh, Lord, I see dry bones. But God promised to seek you. I will give you what you need to restore this, this, this because this is my people. What you see are my people. Those, those dry bones are my people. And I will give them what they need to be alive and well again. I'm going to say something about how you don't know, like me at all. You know, I'm kind of tired of hearing people, church members, not only in this church, but around churches saying that we have a dead church. You like me still? We don't have a dead church. We simply have the challenge to be people of God. People of God who believe in the, in the power of the resurrection of Christ. What God is telling his secret to do, it is impossible to do by him. What my father was facing when he developed a church in the Dominican Republic, it was impossible. In the eyes of even the district, his own college told him, you are crazy. When the vision was created, and he was able to see. And Ezekiel, what Ezekiel is seeing is the dynamics of the power, the presence of God that is transforming what he's now seeing. The Lord brought life to the dry bones. And Ezekiel, I can imagine seeing what was taking place and, and through his vision. He's seeing a new, a new dynamics, a new life, a new spirit, a new sense of connectedness. Knowing that God is the one who is indeed leading God's people. We have to believe that we are God's people. We are his people. We are his church. And we are called to be visionaries for the well-being of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's who we are. Dynamics will come that will not allow us to see clearly where the Lord is leading us to be his people. To be the church that is alive and well. And again, let us promote that we are here as a church around here, around the world, to create a sense of wholeness, a new life, in the name of the Christ who called us to be, the one that we confess. Amen.